is easier uh, because we have the space to get through we can play around with a few different progressions the bar must be more difficult because we've got to come around the bar we've got to clear that object which is in the way which means we can't just pull straight up and push our chest through you'll see some people do muscle ups um, in like in a commercial gym where you've got the handles on the pull up machine and it's a bar muscle up but you've still got the benefit of the ring like it's a faux bar muscle up but you've still got that space whereas this is like the more of a pure one we're going to look at this strict bar muscle up rather than the CrossFit version. So we're not looking for any kind of like kip uh, movement. We're looking for a straight, clean line as much as possible. And because of that, to keep it strict, you have to get explosive. And you've got to pull high, hard, and fast. The CrossFit kip is useful because it allows you to conserve energy because you're using momentum and a whipping movement to get the height with the hips to the bar, and then you can transition over. So it doesn't take as much shoulder strength, which in a workout volume um, environment where you're doing more work is great because you can do more without taking as much capacity out of the shoulders. So this is a different variation, there's nothing wrong or right about either of them, they're just different ways of moving, um, but we'll look at the, at, the, at the straight bar. So I'll show you this, but we're going to just get you guys pretty quickly into band of movements because unless you can get high, and I'll try and show you two different variations, our normal pull up where we're just going to pull, just dip the chin over the bar, doesn't really cut it anymore. It's a power based movement, power being force multiplied by velocity, so we need those two things to be able to do it well. And then Jack will come and drop him with a couple of coaching points we'll go through. Now I'm hoping that I've got this because my shoulders are tired. I'm going to set myself up, pull through. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I'm doing two and I'm going to save one for later. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Jack will talk so, through as I hang. Cut the we didn't talk anything about like the line of pull or anything with the with the ring muscle up because we can just go straight up as normal and we go through we just talked about going through between the rings. We've got now this problem of the bar that we can't go through, so we have to come <coughs> around it. In order to go around it, that means we've got to take some sort of arc where we go backwards, around, up and land almost on top of it. Where we want to finish in our straight bar dip which means pretty much the bar is where your sternum is. So, in order for us to do that, we, want, we need to be coming back on a slight angle to give us that little bit of clearance to come around and on top of the bar. Our setup position, when you see side on, if you get as much as you can, get, try and get a side on view of Tim on here. His setup position, and this is where, he, now he's doing a handstand, right? In terms of movement, but he's just hanging from a bar and his way around. In terms of, um, some of his mobility, we need, you know, we're doing that thoracic um, one over the foam roller, we need the ability to get a little bit past the bar. So, not I know his feet are, but the thing that I'm interested in is the chest. The chest has gone back, that is the mobility option of the shoulder to be able to go into that full overhead position. That's the line he wants to create at the start, and then he's going to drive up and back on that line. That gives him that little bit of clearance backwards to come up, if, if he's gone high enough, to come then on top of the bar, the, the, the sort of marker is your sternum. You need to, your deep bar dip, the bottom portion of that is pretty much sternum at the bar. So we need to be able to get up to that position to allow yourself to come forward, just like the ring, but it's forward and around to land on top of the bar. I'll show you one without the um, that transition, just the high core. Yeah. Yeah, so it's that, that first set position sets an angle that allows you to drive on that same angle. If I just, anyone that's, well, I remember the day when we were trying to do muscle ups and you've, you, you haven't gone through that process and figured that out, where we do a oh, nice pull up, he gets hit and you're like, how? Yeah. Get up any further there, because you're used to just doing this vertical pull, where it's a slight angle in to here, drive up and slightly back. Not back to a front lever, just slightly back, and then we can transition over. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know, not really. No, 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 we can talk about. I was going to talk about strength development later. We could do that, yeah. yeah. So to allow us to feel this whole thing and do the whole thing, it's great to use the band. Who 
Uh, Jim, you done a bomber slip before? Mm -hmm. uh, probably not for now, but. Uh, okay. Who hasn't done a bomber slip before that wants to be my demo? Jim. Jim. I have done a bomber slip. I've done a band, yeah. Are you on a band? Who hasn't? <laughs> you have it. Come on. So, you're going to go. <coughs> Yeah, it's the same way Tim did it. Jump up onto the left. Right, both feet, <laughs> both feet go in the band. Okay, both feet in the band. Now, everything we talked about with prep work for the handstand, it needs to create that hollow position. So ribcage down, um, bum tight. So we should have a little bit of a gap. Come, come so you can see. We should have a little bit of a gap between him and the band if he creates that hollow position. There. We then need to get that chest through to here, and then he's going to hit the band slightly. And then what we're going to drive in three, two, one, drive up and back. Three, two, one, drive up and back. Nice. Hey. Yeah. You did it. I'm down here. You're on top of the bar. Cool. Come back down. Good. Best. The good thing about the band is it keeps. The good thing about the band is it keeps you honest. If you bend your knees. You take the tension off the band so you're not helping yourself. It also makes to keep you honest in terms of being able to maintain that position. So think like the hollow rocks we're doing, think, think like the handstands. All these same principles, they apply by just doing something else with the arms. Yeah? But in terms of that alignment, we want to try and maintain that as we go through. Let me just show you one last thing. I was going to talk into a bit now, but just because it will help you. When you come into that setup position with the chest, and this is what Jacko was talking about, the, bar, the band really gives you some feedback. So what you don't want to pull from, and I, set, I try and set up is here, it's not going to work as a particularly good position. Yeah, so um, Tim's a little bit, got a little bit of a better position, a little bit of a more hollow position, so there's a real nice distance between him and the band. When I set myself up, I'm going to come through, and I want that band to come through, so I'm going to hang straight, and I'm just going to set that, and then I'm going to pop that, and when my chest hits the bar, you can see what's happening, that shoulder's into full flexion, and my end range, chest hits the band, sorry, Feet is still at 25 to, we want to go there. That's my line. So that's happening at the shoulder. In, snap out. I'm creating speed by having that little bit of, like, you can sort of run for you, my muscle physiology there. <coughs> Decreasing slack. Because you can put power down quick. So come down, get that chest through. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alright, so in that bottom position, just have that confidence that some of you guys are making that hollow body and it's pretty good, but trying to pull in that shape is a bit of a strange one. So you need to let yourself come through and just make that extension. So imagine you're gonna in that last little bit, I'm just making myself longer. So I start in hollow body and then when I come through, tap it. That last little bit of extension just means I hit there and then I go. So as soon as I've kind of come through, I'm going to put my feet on it, I'm going to let that little bit of long body go, snap, and then when I hit that bottom of my long, boom, that's when I pull. Hit it, long, and through. Don't find yourself in that position trying to find the shape, because when you pull, you're just not connected. I'm just going to end up by probably pulling backwards, the hips are going to go too high. The great thing about the band is if you use it properly, you can really start, you can use it as a measure of I need to push against it, it gives me some feedback. The band's pushing me upwards, I'm starting to lose the shape that I need to be in. And then when you pull high, it's just that, that pattern of just trying to get away from the bar so I don't come too close to it. You guys are doing well, it's just that it all comes from that setup position. Creating the right line and try as much as possible not to allow that to pop. It goes back to what we said all weekend about lat length. If we're tight overhead, if the lats are short, we're going to go into an overhead position, it's going to win if it's short and tight. So I'm going to end up in this bottom shape. If I have good lat length, I can then keep the ribs cage locked in, tight, I can hold that shape, keeping more force contained in the system, and therefore I'm going to transfer more force. As soon as I let this go, I've created an energy leak, and the main like, pillar of musculature, which is holding the whole spine together and transferring force up and down the body, our core midsection, I've lost tension, therefore I'm not, being, I'm not going to move as efficiently. So keeping tight, straight and strong is the real key to a strict muscle up and then you being able to do that through a high pull position. 
I hope this is all starting to now come together while we spend time with our handstands. It's really important to make these nice long body shapes. We talk so much about shoulder mobility because if you're tight and we haven't got the range, you're never going to move beautifully, which is the whole point of what we're trying to do. That makes sense. The straight bar dip component is pretty straightforward. Like you can practice them just like a normal dip. So if you show you there's a couple of ways you can get up you guys can play around with this we'll keep practicing in a minute but you can either muscle up up or the other way is what i think jacko kind of before the, the maverick muscle up <laughs> i've been able to yeah. get if you haven't got straight bar dip like parallel bars in your gym where you can just get onto it from a nice height if you've got to do the straight bar for your straight bar dip practice these are fun you don't want to muscle up you're just going to hang and i'm just going to pull my hips up push them over the bar watch out for you go nice <laughs> so then my straight bar dip position is staying high, dropping through, keeping the elbows tight, and I can just get strong and then stern in position as low as I so want just to. Just show like a quite a, a shallow dip. If you're not very strong. Like only go like the same principle with the with the ring one. If you can only dip that low, he's gotta be able to do a pull-up to like his fucking belly button to enter the transition. So the deeper you can go, the easier it's gonna be for when you go to do your muscle-ups. Yeah, the higher you can pull, the easier it's going to be for you to get into that bottom of that deep dip. I sometimes worry that we oversimplify it, we should be able to give you more, but that really is the crux of it. And it, the, the, the outcome of that is what you're going to do with your strength training to, to, to create the adaptations that you need. Just to, remember if it's a power movement, somehow we need to train more force so I'm stronger, I can apply more force, and I need to be able to improve velocity or speed of movement. And those two things together is what's going to get me above the bar providing you guys have got the right technique.